the great thing about living in a democracy is every four years, you, you get an opportunity to change things. We are sitting in Tyler Perry Studios. What is it like for you coming through the gates each day? Gratitude. I'm just thankful. I feel this tremendous sense of obligation for all the people who helped me get here. Ones I don't know, ones I may never know. You know, people who bought tickets and came and stood out in the rain and got babysitters to come see the plays early on who believed in me. All the way back to the ancestors who prayed for one day, a generation to be able to be in this position. So I'm humbled by it. It's just gratitude. I'm grateful. What does it mean to, having come here in the 90s, self-finance your first play, to now have this footprint here? What is this legacy that you want to it, it Being the home of Dr. King and having the dream and being able to come here and live here. I'm telling you, when I first got here, I saw black people doing well, which blew my mind, mm -hmm. who had houses, who went, the, the families went to dinner. My family and I, we never went to dinner. We didn't, you know, the house, our neighborhood was, was not great. And to have, to see that, this is what I tell people, exposure is so important. If you see it, that means you can do it. And when I got here, I saw something, something vibrated in me that I thought, this is where you need to be. Now, you talked recently about House Bill 41 and, and the heartbeat bill and why you specifically said, you know, I will not up and leave Georgia. First of all, when you put a quarter of a billion dollars in the ground in one place, you can't just go, OK, I'm out. There are some studios that are saying, you know, we'll donate our fees, donate our, you know, the money that they're getting from being here. Do you think that's enough? Well, I'm, of course, it will help. But but I also think that may be about some sort of uh, out of some sort of guilt. I, I just wish everybody would just take a deep breath. Everybody calm down. I know we're in a, we're in a, in an era where a hashtag can change everything, but just take a deep breath about this thing because there's a lot of, of things at work here that are bigger than what we're seeing. And just like being shot down recently by the courts, just let it play out. Calm down, no need to slit anybody wrist just yet. Just calm down. The great thing about living in a democracy is every four years, you, you get an opportunity to change things. So even if, if, if it hadn't been shot down by the courts, and I know there's a lot of legal battles going back and forth, I'm still committed to making it work here because in four years, it'll be a different place. And you can't base your life and your decision based on temporary circumstances. You have to look to the long run, when you, especially when you're in this business and in this situation. Tell me a little bit about what you what, everything that you have here. Well, it's 330 acres. We just finished phase one, which is the 12 sound stages, which is the first phase and the entry. The dream building, which completely, it was a building full of cubicles from end to end, and now it's a thriving my a corporate office. That's one phase. The second phase that we're starting uh, late next year is the six lane highway, the back lot, um, the small little European town, a bigger lake and pond on it. Uh, so it's just, there's so much more that I'm going to do here. This is just at a good moment where I can say, okay, take a breath. Let's celebrate it for what it is. This is a dream come true for me. And everybody who walks in the door when they see that, you should see their expressions on some of these people's faces who haven't had a shot. So I've been on many sets and I'm the only black face there, right? Only one. So to come here and see this whole hodgepodge of everybody represented equally and fairly. And when they see that, it means a lot to them for sure. What is the ultimate goal of Tyler Perry Studios? Just to, to remain viable, to do what we're doing, but also be the, the voice, the place for the ones who are marginalized, disenfranchised, who are dis discarded. Um, because what I want this to be is a place for the underdog. That's, that's what I've always felt like I was because I didn't play by anybody's rules. And I felt like I had to do it my way. And I, and I just can't wait to see all of the dreamers and the people who come through this gate who get it and go out and do amazing things. There are thousands of people around here working. There's about 600 and then you add all the other shows. There's 10, 20, 30,000 people coming through the gate every couple of days. So I've given up on the numbers as much as it is who gets it. Numbers don't matter to me as much as who gets it. If I can get one person to get it, take this moment, run and jump and create their own, then I've done what I'm supposed to do. You have this big deal with BET and Viacom. What can you tell me about that partnership? When you have a facility like this, you have a, the capacity to do many, many different things. So the great thing about the Viacom deal and BET is starting off with those two shows, which will soon be five or six shows, and then launching BET Plus and launching new shows there, and also being able to program VH1 and uh, and uh, Comedy Central and Nickelodeon and anything else I wanted to. It just it made it so freeing for me to be able to do so much more. So. I love it. I love it. So far, so good. I'm excited about The Oval. I'm super excited about Sisters, and I just can't wait. I have so much content that I want to create. I, I, I don't have enough day hours in the day to really just fully do all that I want to do. 
And I'm trying to organize my life now so that I can do more and more. But yeah, the, you know, if you're looking for Medea, the new Medea play, that's where it'll be. It'll be on streaming. If if I decided to do another Medea thing, it'll be on BET Plus. So it's pretty exciting. I love that if. At this point, I'm completely done. But but in order to get in there and make that thing sing and hum, mm-hmm. she'll show up. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I feel like throughout your career, especially early on, people always underestimated, for example, like your box office sales. People would be surprised that the movie did so well. No, I always knew it from day one with Diary of a Mad Black Woman. They thought Diary of a Mad Black Woman would do 20 million the entire movie, and it opened past that. So there's a clear disconnect when they try to track my audience. They don't know how to really get to them. Black women, when they are with you, they're like country music fans. Nobody can take them away from you. So, And they've been with me all these years, and I'm grateful for every moment of it. You know, Hollywood has struggled recently with those kind of mid-range, mid-budget comedies. What is the key to your success in making them? Well, I, for, for me, it's it's entertain the audience, make sure I'm giving them exactly what they need and low invest and high return. So you want, I want to go in and give the best quality that I can for a budget and then get the returns because that's what helped build all of this. That's what business is. It's the return. Listen, I love to see an incredible, amazing, wonderful movie that is visually stunning. It's so beautiful and just, oh, this is so great. But then you look at the returns, it, it didn't even return 2%. So how can you sustain a business that way? So for the most part, first of all, first and foremost for me, it's business. Now I'm at a place now where I can say, you know what, let's try and do some other things. What are the next ventures that you want to, you know, turn towards? I wrote a play, a movie in 1995 called A Jazz Man's Blues about a jazz singer and a Holocaust survivor. I've been talking about it for years. I think it's time for me to do it now. It's just one of those really wonderful, rich stories that I'm really interested in doing. And even Katrina telling that story in, in multiple parts. So, yeah. Do you look at that as as more of a, a limited series? Now that I have BET Plus, it looks like it could be something that would be great for streaming. So we'll see. Maybe maybe theatrical. We'll see. And um, you also just announced another new series for Nickelodeon as well. Yeah, Dun-dun. yeah. Based on uh, this kid, Young Dylan, who was on Ellen. Uh, it's, this kid, kid is so great. He's a young rapper. He's just he's such a great kid. And seeing him on Ellen and getting called from Nickelodeon and asking me if would I do a show around him, I thought, yeah, let's go. Let's go do our version of. Fresh Prince 2019. Well, what is the key to, to getting that young kids audience? Is it through, you know, linear programming? Well, that's Nickelodeon. And anytime I get to do a family, especially having a five-year-old time, I get to do a family show, I'm, 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 I'm all in. And I just, I, I know that House of Pain was a huge family show and it had family themes and families loved it. So going back to that space is really good. 